this is Lon, and I just finished watching video number three in the Affiliate.com launch series, and I've got some good stuff to share with you now. First, I'd have to say that if you're not watching these, I think you're missing out on some really good stuff. These big launches and these sideways sales process videos are completely based on delivering exceptional content, and I think this one is no exception. I wholeheartedly recommend that you opt in with the link below and watch these. You can opt out anytime so it's no big deal. I'm finding the content to be solid advice and the thing I love, they're actionable. And I'll be taking a look at that too. So I've decided to lay this analysis out into a couple of categories because it turns out there's a lot to cover. Of course, I want to look at the video techniques and reverse engineer some of those and show you how those are done. I'll also make some observations and comments about the content and the flow. By that I mean, why are they doing what they're doing and saying what they're saying and so on. Some of it will be video instruction like what you're watching right now, and some of it will be notes and links in the text area of the posts. Otherwise, I'll be making videos all week here. But there's some good lessons to be learned here and some low hanging fruit right for the picking. So let's get started. First, throughout all the videos, you'll notice a couple of key points. There's a mix of camera work, slide captures and screen capture video clips. And Andy alternates between all of these. I'm not really going to get into all the camera stuff because the focus of this analysis series is the content itself and the screencast videos. But it looks pretty much as I would expect. A three camera setup, really high quality, diffused lighting. They use lavalier or lapel mics to get great audio. And everything looks like it's shot in front of a green screen and chroma keyed out to this nice white background. Let's start off with the slide technique that's used throughout the series. The first thing is notice the background. It's a simple gradient very clean, no watermarks or logo images cluttering things up. And one thing to note that you won't see in the slide recordings is bullet points. Anything on the screen is put there solely and specifically to engage your brain to focus on what's being said. This is the way most good presentations are done now with a focus on design and the message instead of multiple points being made on a single slide with bullets and this is a great takeaway and a great habit to get into. Now I can't be totally sure if Andy's using PowerPoint on the PC or maybe Keynote on the Mac. He says he uses both but we can create this in PowerPoint so let's see how. My first tip actually answers a question in the comments of the first video I put out and that is what about widescreen formats for PowerPoint? That's a great question, Mark. A great question, Mark? <laughs> hey, Mark, thanks for the great question. Yeah, this is very useful, especially with the advent of the YouTube widescreen format, which is their default now. So here's how you set that up. I'll be using PowerPoint 2010. And seriously, I cannot recommend this upgrade enough. I love this. You can go to Microsoft's site and get an evaluation to check it out or to work along with these if you like. I'll show my favorite features as we go and you'll see why I dig this so much. To set up for widescreen, go to Design, Page Setup, and from the drop down, choose the on screen show 16 by 9. This is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is the widescreen format. Don't worry about any of the size stuff. This doesn't matter because we'll be resizing it when we record and edit anyhow. And it'll be landscape orientation by default. That's it. What? You th thought it was going to be hard? Oh wait, I can make it even easier for you and give you something to use to follow along if you like. Hmm. Check for a link below to download this sample PowerPoint file. It's all set up. It's the template I'll be using to create these video tutorials and I'll also post a final version with all the little goodies and doodads included at the end of this series. Feel free to use it as you see fit. 
Let's take a look at this first effect that Andy the Video Boss Jenkins uses. At about the 38 second mark, we get a taste of the overall content flow of the slides. This flying in and then flying out for the next slide effect. It's a nice clean graphic and text come in together to highlight and bring a visual to the narration. And they exit, ready for the next point and movement. This motion is called the slide build and it's a standard animation feature in PowerPoint. And this goes on with some minor variation till about the minute 30 mark. I've tried to recreate that here, and I don't know if these are accurate, but I'm going to use a Century Gothic font for the lighter text and Arial Bold for the heavier type. And it almost looks like there's some kind of beveling or stroke effect here. You can play with this under Format, Text Effects, but I'm going to stay simple and not bother with that for now. I'm going to whip through this pretty fast, but you'll be able to watch later and see the details if you like. And I have a little surprise for you if you don't care to go through that exercise. Okay, first I'm going to center up. I will click on the object itself, not the text area, and go to Format and Align to Middle. I'll have an image underneath the text, so I'll use the up arrow key and scooch it up some. Yes, yeah, scooching is the technical term for that. Under the text, Andy uses some really nice looking icon-like images. This is a nice clean tactic because he can change the image in the middle and still keep a clean, consistent look and feel across lots of different images. I guess these are custom made by their graphics designer. Kind of hard to tell, but here are a couple of ideas to come up with your own images to use in this case. Certainly, you could also have these created by any pro designer at very reasonable cost. Or, you can try your favorite royalty-free resource sites. Mine are presentermedia.com and graphicriver.net. You can also look for free icons like over at iconarchive.com. Be sure to read their terms of service if you want to use any of these. The main things to keep in mind for any of these options are, number one, make sure that you're getting a PNG file with transparency and get it as big as you can. At least 256 by 256 when I can do that. An ICO file will do you zero good, so skip all of these. I like the clean blue set here. 144 nice images and commercial use is allowed. You can download everything as a zip file also, which is what I've done. So here they are. Let's drop one in. I want to try to match an image to the narration and text. So let's see. Talking about relationships, maybe this one. And just resize and line it up a little bit. Nice. And now I'll do the builds. Again, I'm going to whip right through this, but the sweet part, you won't have to do any of this. And again, I'll show you in a minute how to just steal and modify my work. Okay, select the text object itself, not inside the text box, the whole object, and go to Animations, Add Animation. We'll use a fly-in. Now, it came in from the bottom, and I don't want that, so click the Animation Pane button. The drop down here, Effect Options, and instead of from the bottom, I'll choose from left. I'm going to smooth the end motion so it's not so abrupt to about 0.1 seconds. This is one of the great new features I love. And I'm going to try a bit faster fly-in. Uh, 0.3 seconds, starting when I click the mouse. I also want to fly out, so click the text box again, add animation, and on exit, I want it to fly out. Change the effect options, fly out to right. Don't care about the smoothing here. The time duration is 0.3. 
and on click again. So here it is in slideshow. I click, text flies in smoothly. Click again, text flies out to the right. Now the really fun part. Possibly my favorite feature in PowerPoint 2010, the Animation Painter. Check this out. Click on the text, then the Animation Painter button. I get the little Format Painter cursor and click on the image. And it duplicates all the settings and effects I just created. To make it cool like Andy's, I'll switch a couple of the things around in the options. Drop down, Effect Options, fly this one in from the right. Notice that all the other timing settings have been painted into this one. I love that. And very important, I want this effect to start with previous, so that they happen essentially at the same time. I'll do the same for the image exit that we did with the text one. And the last tweak is I need to change the order a little because I want the picture and text to come in together. So just grab and slide the image entrance up under the text. That's it. Let's play it. Click. Boop. Click. Boop. Sweet. Okay, at this point, if you're thinking, yeah, that was cool and all, but it seems a little complicated. Well, guess what? All of the work is already done. I just did it for you. How does that help you? I think you'll like this. Below this video is a link to a copy of this PowerPoint file. One with all this stuff already in it. Let me switch hats for a second, and I'll be one of you folks to demonstrate. <clears throat> hey guys, it's Mari from Minnesota. So that guy, Lon, he gave me this really awesome file, and I want to use it for myself to make a killer video. So he says, all I need to do is open it up, and go to File, Save As, and give it a new name so I don't screw up the original template he gave me. Because I could do that. Find one of the slides I want to use, change the text to whatever I want. I guess I could also click on this image and right click and change picture. Ah, geez. Uh, let's see here. Maybe this one. Oh, yeah. That's nice, you think? Hey, and you know. I bet I could probably mess around a bit here. I think I'll copy this, paste it up, use that animation painter dealy, delete this one, and maybe move this up. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. <clears throat> All right, glad you liked that. I did up a few other of the effect swipes from the affiliate.com video in other slides in this deck, like the one that comes in at the 210 mark of video one. And I got some more coming for you. You can duplicate the slides, move them around, copy and paste any of the elements, modify and replace stuff. This has been just one of the tips I've come up with so far, so be sure to stay tuned because I am working feverishly to crank these out. This is really fun stuff. So I'll see you soon, and I'd love to see what you come up with if you try this out. So do it, and leave a comment, and uh, let's get back to work. See you in the next video.